Hello, beautiful, and welcome to the podcast where we're moving the conversation forward about the choices you make in your daily life. I'm your host, Monica Cox, and I'm here right alongside of you, learning, growing, observing, and trying to make better choices consciously and subconsciously. Together, we're going to become better versions of ourselves and have raw, honest, open conversations about the things that truly affect our lives. And maybe, just maybe, finally get to a place where everyone else's BS doesn't trigger us. We're going to dive into some like clips that are just going to spark a conversation today. We're going to completely change topics here. This one, I don't know, Abigail, if you remember this one, but no, I don't. You can see this is the evolution leader. And I put God, the creator of everything, on the right side and evolution on the left. I won't change my mind because I don't have to because I'm an American. I'm dug in and I'll never change. Back. Look, you're wasting our time. You're not going to get us to not believe in evolution. And why is that? Because the smartest scientists in the entire world all agree that it's real. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds, these were all the smartest scientists. Only problem is they kept being wrong. This is insane, you fool. I'm a fool because I have more faith in the saints that wrote the Bible? Yeah. Because you just read the words of a bunch of guys that you never met, and you just take it on faith that everything they wrote was true. Hmm. And what makes you think what your scientists are writing is any more truer than my saints? Because there are volumes of proven data, numbers, figures. Have you poured through the data yourself? The numbers, the figures? Well, no. No. Oh, interesting. So let me get this straight, Mr. Reynolds. You got your information from a book written by men you've never met, and you take their words as truth based on a willingness to believe, a desire to accept, a leap of, dare I say it, faith? That one got me. It was just so hilarious because I think you can apply that to so many aspects of you know, science, uh, medicine, religion, spirituality. It's like so many people are just wanting just tell me the answer and I'll do it. And I'll, I'll believe that story. Right. I was with a client uh, yesterday and we got down to this root cause of like the doctors told her one thing and she just believed it. Mm-hmm. They had their science, their proof to, you know, back them up. And then it was this story that she created in her head. Doesn't matter if it's true or false. For her. For right. her. Right. Yeah. This is the thing that like drives me absolutely freaking nuts with science and like how people like I love that because as a scientist as somebody who is like trained in science in addition to like my lifelong of being like in the woo and like seeing spirit and like my dead grandmother appearing to me and like oh, I'm, like saving my life and like all of these things like I like it was it was very like I went into science because I was having those things happen to me like you can't like see your dead grandmother and like have her like save your life from like literally a near-death experience and like not go in and into the space where you're like did that really just happen to me like what the hell so I threw myself into science in an effort to understand what the hell was happening to me and was I just crazy was I like bipolar was I schizophrenic all these things right and I chose to study neuroscience first and then went and like furthered my medical education. Now, the thing that everybody, almost everybody, including some scientists, and this is the like, fuck that part, like some scientists have drunk their own fucking Kool-Aid. It's so dumb. But what they don't, what most people do not understand is, is that science is not meant to show you what is real, what is true. It is meant to ask questions that they then create experiments around to see whether or not they can prove themselves wrong. Let me re- let me say that again. It's not to show you what's true. It's to see what's not true. <laughs> that is what science is about. You, yeah. you create a hypothesis and you then test that hypothesis to see if it's wrong. 
And that's how you get closer and closer to the truth. Right. By finding From a certain I, that's perspective. Like, yes. That's such like a, that's, that's a spiritual concept in and of itself. Like the spiritual concept is sometimes you have to find out what isn't to understand what is. I mean, for just like, think about your own personal development journeys. How many times did you have to like try on different parts of things to see if that was you or if that was what you wanted to scoop up in your identity. And then you're literally like, no, fuck this. This ain't, this ain't me. This doesn't feel right. Right. Like science is no different to me. And I think like the beauty behind science and why I love, why I do love science <clears throat> is that most of science is malleable because the truth is, is we don't know what we don't know. And so when new evidence comes in, science does shift. The results do shift, except for certain things that are fact. Do you know what I mean? Like there are certain components that are fact. We can, we can all agree we live in a, in a world that has gravity. We can all agree on that. That's a motherfucking fact. You know what I mean? And so like, I think like that's the standpoint for me. Flat earthers, I just, I can't, I'm gonna be honest. I can't, um, I can't, I just don't get it. Um, like I know enough people who are pilots. I know enough people who like are in the, the know, who have seen it, who have seen like the earth and the, 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 the curvature of it. Like, I mean, I'm going to say I've never tried to figure out if the earth was flat or not. And so like, I don't think I get a say in this argument. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I also just think too that like the like flat earthers are an interesting breed because they do do the science. Like I watched a whole documentary on flat earthers and like they spent most of the documentary doing the science, doing the science to show that there is a curvature to the world. And every single time that they got an answer that did not go with their hypothesis. Their hypothesis being that the world is flat. When every time they had information that proved them wrong, they didn't stop to change their thing. They were just like, nope, the experiment must be wrong. No, the experiment's not wrong. Your, your thought process is wrong. That's what's wrong. But this is a danger, this, not a, this inability to understand this about science and about and about faith, right, is why it was so dangerous during the pandemic for people who didn't understand science, didn't understand how it worked, to be telling people who also didn't understand science and also didn't understand how it worked to go and do their own fucking research. I'm sitting here going, you guys don't even understand what is happening. You don't even understand the word pandemic to even start, like, trying to make judgments or opinions or statements or whatever you want to call it around what is happening, much less going and trying to read a 10 page research article on the science behind vaccine making. Now, don't get me wrong. And I've said it on this podcast plenty. I don't agree with the science that happened during COVID at all in relation to COVID. I think it was Jack. And I, that's where I say like some scientists have gone and fallen into their own Kool-Aid of like, no, I am superior. I am God. And therefore like it's confirmation bias, which is dangerous guys. If you don't know what that is, yeah. go look it up. Confirmation bias is dangerous. Don't fucking do it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just, it's dumb. It's dumb. And this is <laughs> how you get in these weird predicaments. Yeah. And, and don't you think it comes back to, you know, doing the work so you're able to follow your intuition and use your discernment, no matter who is speaking to you, that when you are listening to that and you are like, that doesn't make sense, right? I don't care if you are an expert in that, that field, that doesn't feel right to me. And that doesn't mean that the expert is wrong. It just means that it's not right for you. Right. Because this is the other thing about science is, and you already kind of brought it up in a roundabout way with your particular client, that science looks at the majority, yeah. the majority of the time, this is accurate. Now we have standard deviation, plus or minus, meaning it could shift either way. And there's also a, a, a factor called outliers, meaning they don't they don't go with, with the general trend. So you have to understand that as a human, 
you are you could very well be an outlier you could very well be plus or minus the general trend and you guys for as many for an entire world that wants to be fucking special the fact that there's a majority of you that refuses to think of yourselves as special and the outlier and will just take what somebody tells you and not actually go and like look shit up is insane to me well i was just gonna say don't you think most people can be outliers then making the outliers the norm right especially yeah. with health yeah and this is where like the then the trend shifts right like the science should then like the hypothesis should change mm -hmm. right and this is where you know i get frustrated with with people because they and by people i mean scientists because they're unwilling to change their hypothesis they're like this is what has been done and of course like it must be right yeah this one was interesting. I have to bring it up um, because I'm sure we have someone who knows someone or maybe you are taking drugs. And Abigail, maybe in your consultations, if you see this, are you seeing something similar? So let's talk about Manjaro and all of its their counterparts. My name is Meredith Bullets and I am an energy reader. So I had this client and she asked me to do an energy scan of her body. But when I got to her stomach, she didn't have one. I kept trying to look for it and I couldn't find it. And so I said to her, did you have gastric bypass or something? Now, mind you, I've read people that have had gastric bypass before and I could see a stomach, but in this case, I could not. And so she said to me, do you want me to tell you? And I said, sure, why don't you have a stomach? And she said, well, actually I'm on Ozempic. And I sat there and I thought, and I said to myself, why is this happening? Why does her body think that she doesn't have a stomach? But it makes perfect sense. If you think about the fact that your stomach slows down, you're not hungry, some people are irritated, and your stomach is where your serotonin lives. But whatever the case is, is when I read her, she didn't have a stomach. The other thing is when I look at the pancreas, it's actually shrunk. Instead of seeing a nice full pancreas energetically, what I see is like a flat pancreas, like it's been shrunk down in some way. When I look at the liver, it seems to be working slower, like almost like your liver has a flat affect to it. So I'm curious, people that are on Manjaro and Ozembic and all of those things, does it make sense what I'm seeing that your brain does not know energetically? So information wise, et cetera, movement wise, et cetera, does your brain not think that you have a stomach? And by the way, I asked my doctor about this, who was a weight loss specialist. And she said it made complete sense and that I was freaking her out a bit. Let me know what <laughs> thoughts, Abigail. Energy workers that feel like as soon as they tell somebody who's in the medical field about something energy related, it's freaking me out. <laughs> a lot of doctors actually have faith, guys. It's <laughs> actually not weird <laughs> um if I were doing that scan I wouldn't have seen it in that way and but I understand why her why she was seeing it that way so with readers and this is why you'll get a you can go to three or four or five or however many readers you want and you could get a different answer around giving them the same question or the same topic to look into and the reason why you'll get different answers that if you're actually then if you have all of those readers come together, I can almost guarantee you, I would say like 95%, unless you, and let me say this, get, get readers who are all on the, across the same level. Okay. Like at the same level or, or higher from them. Okay. You can't go and get like a newbie and, and like try to stick them into the mix. You want like seasoned to mastery level readers. Okay. That if all of those people got together, they would be like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all talking about the same thing, but they're explaining it differently because they're how, whoever they're having help them receive. However, they're receiving. I have my guides, my higher self, right? I have a certain vocabulary in my head, a certain uh, of uh, picture, certain pictures in my head that those beings, you know, can utilize to give me energy. They can, only can use those things 
in order to get me to understand so I can deliver the message. This is why it's important for readers not to just assume and to say, you know what, this is what I'm seeing. Does it resonate with you? This is what I'm seeing. Does it make sense to you? Because it may make sense to us or it may not, but it may make sense, make sense to the person who you're reading or not. And so you have to then find, you know, the, the connection, right? So it makes sense to me that she would have seen it that way. Some of the things that she was saying about Ozempic, like the, the structural like parts, no, not, not real. <laughs> um, like serotonin doesn't live, doesn't live in your gut and it, and the medication itself doesn't trick your brain into thinking you don't have a stomach. Your brain is well aware you have a stomach, but she had to in, inform her client, you, your appetite, your ability to like break down food is so debilitated because of something you're taking that seeing no stomach was the only way that she was going to be able to make that information known. So it, it, it's, it's an interesting I can understand why people would like see that and would either like freak out, get pissy, <laughs> like, especially if they don't understand how reading somebody and reading somebody's energy works. I mean, with the serotonin in the gut, though, isn't you do make happy juice in your gut, right? With the gut in your, in your gut, but understand that gut means your intestines in your intestines, not not your stomach. Do like, you think she is, was like? maybe do you think that she was like just referring to all of it I think that she doesn't understand anatomy more what? than just the names of the organs and therefore she just used a term that people that like everybody else knows because she knows she's like speaking to the same level of people but like I listen to her and I'm like serotonin is made in multiple places in the body primarily in the small intestine mm -hmm through the absorption of nutrients <laughs> where we can then build amino acids and neurochemicals and all these other things, right? <laughs> Education, look at the wonders it can do. Um, where you can actually then explain something um, and still have it make sense to a doctorate level and somebody who like never went to college, right? Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that for her, it's just, it's the language that she has to use because that's literally all she has. Yeah. And this is why I tell people, if you are interested in anything, in, in any sort of area of energy or spirituality or whatever, go read shit you would never read ever in your life. Go read a book about the planet Jupiter. Go read a book of, that's a you know science fiction book. Go read a murder mystery. Go read a romance novel. Go read smut. Go read a you know, somebody's memoir, diversify your mind so that you have more ability to receive because you can only, your guides and your ancestors and all the things, all the beings that can interact with you, they only can use what you have. Yeah. If you don't have it, they can't use it. Yeah. But bringing in the medical side, right. And we all know that everything from drugs to food to our environment affects our cellular health affects the way our body functions yeah. so yeah. when you're going into a reading like this do you think most people can pick up on like pharmaceutical pharmaceutical drug use regular drug use alcohol um you know all those things because obviously she the the person had to say to her like hey i'm taking this drug and then it was like, oh, that's why I'm, I'm X, Y, and Z. It depends on your level of your level of knowledge and experience. So the some people, based out like off of experience of working with a certain population, they get used to seeing something consistently show up in somebody's energy, and they have read enough people that they're like, I know what this feeling is. They may not know the exact like words necessarily but they know that there's something not right in the system mm -hmm. and so they're like you're you've got to be on some drug or something if they if they have medical knowledge they will probably be able to see or perceive that it is a drug of some kind and be able to call that out it just depends on how often they've seen it cool. so it, it, it it's possible it's it's possible to see 
any and every level. It just depends on your expert, your experience level. Yeah, interesting. Like okay, here we go. Purpose. Um, but the funny thing about about purpose is that it unfolds more and more to you every day. So you can you could be living in what was revealed to you um, at a particular time, and then you might get stagnated because there's more that you're supposed to do. It doesn't just stop as you do one thing. So I think it's I think it's just being open to what you're supposed to do at this moment, not getting stuck in the past because purpose is not related to career. Purpose is not related to a job. It's 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 related to what God put inside you that you're supposed to give to the world. And you can keep do that in, in various different positions and forms. So I think it's 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 staying open to what that essence is. Um, at all times like that to me is I think that just speaks to like the fact of evolution like it personal evolution I mean not like science evolution um but like our personal evolution journeys like when you think about it it's like at any given moment I can't tell you how many times that I thought what I was doing in that moment or who I was being I'm living into my purpose and then something would happen and it would be like that's not my purpose this is actually my purpose. And then something would shift and then it would be like, oh no, this is my purpose. And so now it's like, I just, I don't even really identify with the language purpose anymore. Like I don't identify with like having to be one thing or having to stick with one thing forever. I just know that it, 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 it does continue to unfold. And as long as you continue to listen and as long as you continue to follow that path, you're going to deepen your relationship to the understanding of why you're here and what you're doing in the first place. But that will always shift and evolve and at times deepen this way. And then all of a sudden it's like, fuck that. And it's like, now we're going in the opposite direction. But as long as you're following it, like that, and that is so contradictory to what our society tells us is what you should be doing. So anybody that follows that path, which to me, truth be told, I is every single entrepreneur I've ever met. If you are an entrepreneur in any way, shape or form, you have chosen a path that most would never go down. Most are not brave enough to follow. Most are not courageous enough. Most people aren't listening close enough to go that route in the first place. So like that's where like to me, it's like the entrepreneur sector. I fucking love all of us. Like I literally love each and every one of them because I know that that we were talking about this yesterday. Like they, they say that like when you get to the top, it's so lonely. I'm like, no, it's fucking not. We have an industry of millions of people who are literally doing the exact same thing. It's not lonely because I'm, con con I'm consistently connecting with them and networking with them so that I'm supported and so that I'm held. I'm choosing to put myself in those situations, whether it's in paid investments or it's in these types of connections. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think to, to only add to that is the patience. I think most yeah. entrepreneurs have patience and see that there is like a wider purpose or an end game and they're willing to make harder decisions, whether that be not having the financial income that they could maybe have like in the present moment or work a real job and their entrepreneurship is a side hustle for a few years. And they just know that that's what it is, where I think a lot of people just get caught up of like, well, this is my purpose. You know, I feel so passionate about it. It's like, well, like, yeah, we're all passionate about like, you know, a five bedroom house with four bathrooms and a pool and a jacuzzi and a sauna. But how are you going to build that shit? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and too many people, I think, place it purpose is solely on career and like their job totally and how they make money and that's just not the case like purpose can be that like monica one of your purposes on a, a much smaller scale than than you being an entrepreneur is the fact that you're a mom mm -hmm. yep. like day to day you're you have purpose right your purpose today may have been to go to the grocery store store right you know elevate up from that and it's to be a mom elevate up from that it's to be a, a fertility health coach elevate up from that who the fuck knows right like there's there's different levels to purpose and if you're going to 
And that's why what he's saying is so impactful because it, it's, it's 100% accurate that you can't, if you only look at it from one perspective, you do stagnate, you do get bored, you do like end up losing it. And so it's because you're, you need to grow. And then through your growth, so too does your purpose. So yeah, it's, it's really impactful. And I love everything about him. We lost him too. Well, too. and like the purpose, the purpose aspect too. Like, I love it from this perspective. Like, even for me, I didn't bring this up last night. I almost did, but I didn't. Like, I genuinely believe that for me and like my soul contract and how I had to evolve, I came in with this idea that I was going to be a mom, that I wanted to have kids. And it was like, part of my purpose was unpacking that in this lifetime and recognizing that actually wasn't true to me, that that's actually not a desire that I have. And that was part of my purpose to evolve into like, oh no, you don't have to be a mom just because you're incarnated as a woman. Like you don't have to give your, your healing, your medicine and your love, your, you don't have to give it that way. And it was a literal internal battle with me because I kept being like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why am I, why don't I want to have kids when the rest of the world wants to have fucking kids? And so there was purpose in going through that challenge and unpacking and understanding my deeper truth here. And it's so funny because you can literally say the opposite of like, part of my purpose was to understand that it was okay not to be the breadwinner in my house and yes. that my worth came from the money I was making in my job and ignoring my kids. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> and I think yep. too, Abigail, to uh, piggyback off of you, it's the mundaneness that drives people to stop, right? The mundaneness of healing, of growing, of entrepreneurship, of motherhood. <laughs> Like, I'm going to tell you, it's fucking mundane um, at times, right? It's, and obviously, it has the most amazing moments as well. But I think it's that mundaneness that we've been sold is uh, being lazy, right? Or, you know, for kids, don't daydream. Where are you? You know, and I'm always finding myself like trying not to say that to my kids. Like, go ahead, daydream away. As long as you don't have to be anywhere, like you can have as much time as you want. Um, yes as always ladies so much fun super super honored always. that you guys come and just talk shit with me I love, I love it so uh obviously all the links are down below uh to connect with you guys and really until next month I'm just gonna say it <laughs> yeah Thank you so much again for joining us here on Choices. You can go ahead and leave a five-star review because we're all friends here. But if you really want to move the conversation forward, please connect with us on our social media accounts, which you can find the links below. Have a beautiful week and we'll see you next time here on Choices.